Hi, everybody, and welcome to Big Joe's Journal. Well, here we are at the end of August, and time of transition now from summer vacation to the new school year, as uh, this is going to be a two-week run. You know, this is the end of August, and we begin September. We're going to start off with Labor Day. So we go from summer vacation to the new school year. Summer seemed to be getting shorter and shorter. And of course, this week, the last week in August, uh, in some school districts, well, in every school district, they're having what uh, teacher in-service days. Now, some of those days are going to say Monday and Tuesday, and classes begin on, on Wednesday. Some will have three days, classes beginning on Thursday. And uh, usually in every uh, master contract that teachers sign, uh, there's time for what they call five in-service days. And usually you take two or three at the start of the school year. And then the other two or three are made up during the school year. And it's a time for teachers to gather. This particular time, this first in-service day, will usually be for the whole district. And uh, they'll get together and lay out the plans for the upcoming school year and what they hope to accomplish and um, meet the folks that have been there before and also welcome in the new teachers. Every year, you know, there's a bit of a turnover. Folks retire at the end of the previous year and uh, new teachers come in to take their place. All right now, this year at least, in some areas there's a shortage, shortage of teachers. I think as a teaching profession becomes more and more restricted. I think a lot of people are opting to, uh, to go into other professions that uh, are more rewarding financially, although teaching pays an awful lot better now than it used to many years ago. So you'll have your in-service days and you have your first day of class. Now there's always something interesting, the start of a new school year, Everybody comes back with all kinds of resolutions. Kids come back in, they're going to study harder, they're going to do their homework. Um, teachers come back in, they're, uh, they've got resolutions that they're going to teach the class a little different way, take a little different approach. And everybody comes back, and the idea of in service day is to fire you up, be ready for the start of a new school year. Well, of course, these resolutions, they may last about a week, two weeks if you're real lucky, and then things go back into the old norm. Well, on the athletic scene, uh, many of the uh, participants in fall sports have already been practicing. You had your summer camp, they've been practicing football, soccer, uh, cross country, field hockey, and uh, many of them, the seasons have already started. On the college level, the college level football season, believe it or not, is already underway. First game was played this weekend, and it was in the state of Florida, and it was between the University of Florida and the University of Miami. Florida from the uh, Southeastern Football Conference, which is, has the reputation of being the most powerful football conference in the country right now, and Miami, which belongs to the Atlantic Coast Conference, which is also regarded as a power conference, and currently hosts the current national or defending national champion, the Clemson Tigers. Well, the first game of the season was between Florida and the University of Miami, and Florida won at 24-20. So the college football season is already underway. And uh, many of your sports networks are going to be very, very happy to have college football on Saturday afternoon and Saturday evening. And of course, the, uh, the National Football League gets underway uh, shortly thereafter, I believe the following week. For the New England Patriots, they have one more preseason game left. And that's a traditional uh, preseason game against the New York Giants. 
and I believe this year it's going to be played in uh, New Jersey. Then the Patriots come home and they open at home against the Pittsburgh Steelers. And so here we go again. Everybody looking forward to the Super Bowl already. Some of your sports pages are talking about the Heisman winner. Well, the old saying, you know, the Heisman is the best player in, in college football, but I think that should be remedied to maybe the best quarterback. Certainly not the best player. There's your usual uh, Heisman contenders are quarterbacks. In some cases, you might have a wide receiver, you might have a defensive back, but that's, that's a rarity. And already they're talking about uh, who your Heisman people are going to be. They're saying the quarterback at Clemson, the former quarterback at Clemson who transferred to the University of Missouri when he lost his job at Clemson. He's going to be the starting quarterback in Missouri. He's being touted as a Heisman winner. And there are two or three others that are also being mentioned. But you know, it's too early to talk about that. Season had, hasn't even started yet. The preseason favorites in college football, of course, the defending champs, Clemson. And the former champions, the Crimson Tide of the University of Alabama. So we'll see if that holds up again this year. They seem to be the at the start of the year, the top heavy favorites. Well, we can't forget baseball. Baseball is including on down for the Red Sox. It's been a very, very puzzling year. Right now, they're out on the West Coast. They took two out of three from the San Diego Padres. They blew them out the first game, 11 to nothing. Just barely made it in the second, 5-4. Lost in the third, 3-1. And now they go into Colorado. You know, for years, in interleague play, the Red Sox were dominant. Absolutely dominant. This year, so far, they've won five, they've lost eight. And they've got a two-game series in Colorado. And then they come back into the American League. They go back to Los Angeles to uh, play the Angels. I think that's a, uh, I think it's a three-game series in, in L.A. And somewhere along the line, they've got San Francisco, three games with the, with the Giants. And then they have two more with the Philadelphia Phillies in Philadelphia. That will wind up their interleague play. They aren't uh, playing the Braves this year, which is probably just as well. Because the Braves are... Well, the Braves are having a good season, put it quite bluntly. They're leading the National League East, and they're going to be holding off the Washington Nationals, which are right now the hottest team in baseball. Look at the overall picture, and I hate to say it, but you got to credit where credit is due. And that is to the New York Yankees. They took two out of three from the Dodgers, the three-game series that was built is probably a preview to the World Series. The Yankees have the best record in baseball. And if they maintain that best record in baseball, then that means that uh, they get the advantage in all, all the playoff series. In other words, the first round, they had three out of five will be played in Yankee Stadium. In the League Championship Series, four out of seven. In the World Series, also four out of seven. But we've got a little over a month to go yet, and we'll see what's going to happen. For the Red Sox, well, they're still talking about the possibility of a wild card. But somehow or another, they've got to turn things around in a hurry if they're even going to have a wild card. They're five, at least five games out of the wild card. Now, can they make it up? Yes, they can but they've got to do a lot better, play a lot better than they have been playing. So uh, time will tell. We'll see where, where we go from there. In the meantime, getting back locally, 
it's hard to believe that this weekend, which is Labor Day weekend, high school football season gets underway. And looking around, you look at the, uh, the change in format. For example, Mount St. Joseph, which for a number of years was a football powerhouse in Division I. This year will not be fielding a football team. Now you go by St. Peter's Field, there are no goalposts. What's left of the goalposts are laying over on the ground. And it's going to be a rather unusual fall not to see a football game being played at St. Peter's Field. Um, up north, two of the biggest schools in the state couldn't get enough kids out to be able to field football teams, so they've merged together, Burlington and South Burlington. They call themselves the Sea Wolves, two of the biggest schools in the state, and they couldn't field a football team. So they'll be merged into one. The number of, of Division I schools seems to be declining every year. This year, Brattleboro, which has been Division I for a lot of years, drops down to Division II, as is Mount Anthony and Bennington. The only Division I school in, in the South right now, I know Hartford is Division I, that will be Rutland, Rutland and Hartford, the only two. Getting back to MSJ, altogether they won 16. 16 state championships in football. And that number is only exceeded by Rutland High School, which I believe was 117 over the years. So times are changing. Uh, right now, there are some schools now that have football that didn't have it before, namely Mill River and Otter Valley, Burn Burton had football and they dropped it. Now they've brought it back and they have a very, very successful program down there. Springfield is rebuilding. They will be, I believe, Division Three. Springfield. Uh, Windsor's always had a good program. Uh, Bellis Falls in Division Two has always had a good program. Uh, Woodstock for a number of years have been a, a perennial power. Oxbow came into football, then they dropped it because of lack of numbers. I'm not sure this year whether they're going to field a football team or not. As you know, last year MSJ and Missisquoi boys started the season with football, but without the adequate numbers to field a football team, uh, MSJ dropped football halfway through the season. And I believe uh, Missisquoi did too. This year, kids from MSJ that want to play football will be going up to Otter Valley. And for MSJ, which is my old alma mater, they will be having soccer, both boys and girls. But MSJ, you know, for years, you always had 500, 600 students. And I see this year their enrollment is 77. 77, not very many, not very many. Well, that's pretty much the story everywhere. The student population is down. You know, a few years ago, when I was principal up in Tunbridge, Tunbridge, you know, the scene of the, the great Tunbridge World's Fair, but I was principal up there. And my eighth grade class one year, there were only five kids. Four boys and one girl. So you know, if you want any information, you usually go to the first grade teacher. And the first grade teacher was a veteran. She'd been there a lot of years. So I went to her and said, Doris, how come there are only five kids in the eighth grade? You know, our, our seventh grade, I think, had 22, and our sixth grade had something like, like 25, and so on. This was the average enrollment. Tunbridge, except for that eighth grade, five kids. And she said, well, Mr. T, there twa'n't no fair that year. So that may have explained the uh, low enrollment. 
But it's pretty much a situation all around. There are some schools that are talking about merging because of the, uh, the lack of students. In this area, Black River and Ludlow, this is the last year Black River High School is going to be open. I think their uh, graduating class last year was 11. And this year will be their final graduating class. It's not going to be much bigger. And that, that's too bad. Too bad in a way. Kids that are at Black River this year that want to play soccer will be going to Green Mountain and Chester. I would imagine they will probably field a basketball team, boys and girls, but if they don't, probably be the same situation. You want to play basketball, you know, go down the road to uh, Green Mountain and Chester. When Black River closes, instead of merging with Green Mountain and Chester, they're going to be coming up to Mill River and Clarendon, which doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Be a lot easier for the kids in Ludlow to uh, go down Route 103 and you go down to Green Mountain Union High School in Chester. In the wintertime, coming over Mount Holly can be a challenge. That's right in the snow belt. Ludlow, Ludlow, Manchester, that area is right in the middle of a big snow belt. You know, if you look at, at Vermont, you have areas where we have snow belts. Rutland is right in between snow belts. You have one to the north of us, which covers through Middlebury and Brandon, that area, and one to the south of us, which uh, runs all approximately probably from Wallingford um, down through into Arlington and goes right across the state in, into Ludlow and right over in that area. I know you have more, we have, there's more snow in Bellis Falls in the wintertime than there is in Rutland. Because Bellis Falls is on the southern end of that snow belt. So merging with uh, Mill River on the part of Black River, it means that uh, in the wintertime it's going to be challenging getting up over Mount Holly. Mount Holly in the wintertime is a challenge. So we'll see how that works out, see how it happens, see how many folks really want their kids coming all the way up to Clarence. It makes a long day for the student. And especially if the student wants to participate in uh, extracurricular activities, after school activities. You know, and it's a question, are we going to run a late bus to accommodate these kids in Ludlow? Or will the town of Ludlow? They'll, keep, they'll maintain their grade school so they will still have a school district. And they will still have school buses. But will they provide a bus to go up to uh, Mill River, say, to pick up kids that are participating in extracurricular activities to get them back home? You get up to Mill River, probably a kid will have to leave Ludlow around 7, 7.15, 7.30 in the morning. Means they got to get up around 6. Get home at night around 8, 9 o'clock at night. Makes a long day for a student. And the kid, I don't care how brilliant they are, can never be at their best if they're not fully rested. A lot of kids don't get enough sleep. A lot of them don't get enough to eat. And it shows in how they do in school. Academically, they don't do that well. It's very, very hard for a child who is hungry to be able to focus on subject matter in school. And very, very hard for them to stay awake if they haven't had enough sleep and stay focused on what's happening in the classroom. And the result was that academically, they, they suffer. They go downhill academically. So a lot of things to be taken into consideration. Uh, Act 46 talked about school mergers, but I think they went about it all wrong. And the result is you kind of wonder, well, what school district do you belong to? In some cases, you've got school districts and sub-school districts. 
So you never know exactly what is going on. And of course this year there are going to be changes in personnel. Some schools are going to get new principals. I understand there is going to be a new principal down in Wells. Uh, Pultley will remain the same, Joe DeBonis. Uh, Joe's a former student of mine at Pultney. In fact, he ran for the state legislature a number of years back. And he lost to another former student of mine, Fred Maslack, who went to Montpelier. The, the uh, current representative from Pultney is the former town clerk, Patty McCoy. And she's also the uh, uh, minority leader in the House of Representatives in Montpelier. Well, we wish everybody as they begin a new school year the best of luck. And have a great year and do your best. Give it your best shot to the best of your ability. For a number of kids going to school, it is a challenge. Not everybody is cut out to be an academic. And this is where Stafford Technical Center comes in. A lot of kids, they're much more talented working with their hands. And this gives them their opportunity to develop their talents and get a job in the industrial world where they will shine. It's not everybody is cut out to go to college. Some people go to college and they'll drop out. And then maybe they'll come back in a few, few years later after they've seen the world and had a little bit of experience. Which, you know, I, I think it's a good idea. If some kids, when they get out of high school, that first year will be, they won't go to college that first year. But they will, they will spend a year working at a job, seeing what it's like out in the real world. And if they do that, they come back that way, they're much better equipped psychologically and physically and everything else. They know better what they want to do. And they'll be much more proficient as a college student. For folks of that category, we have the Community College of Vermont, which is very, very good. Very good. For people who uh, are in a certain job or a certain profession, they want to make a change in their life, change for the better. From their point of view, they want to improve their education. CCV is just the place for it. And they go in there for a couple of years, get an associate degree. And if they wish to go on, they can transfer in this area to Castle University, get their bachelor's degree. Another thing is we begin this school year, Colleges that are now history. Green Mountain College in Pulteney. For a lot of years, Green Mountain College was a two-year school for women only. And then they went to four years for women only, and then they went co-ed. Uh, Southern Vermont College in Bennington. Now that college used to be known as St. Joseph's Business College and was started by the Sisters of St. Joseph. Um, they're also the, the Fathers of the Holy Cross who have Notre Dame University out in South Bend, Indiana. A young man preparing for the priesthood, he has to go through a seminary, and they also have what they call a year of a novitiate. And that was in Bennington, Vermont. The Holy Cross Fathers still serve the, uh, the Catholic parish in Bennington, Sacred Heart, St. Francis de Sales. But they had their novitiate in Bennington. Well, as their, their numbers grew smaller, they relocated the novitiate to Notre Dame. And so it had been their novitiate. Um, St. Joseph's Business College moved in there, went from being a business college to a liberal arts four-year college and changed their name to Southern Vermont College. And of course, this year, due to lack of numbers, they are closed. 
Well, Castle University has picked up the slack. And of course, the College of St. Joseph, as I mentioned, is closed here in Rutland. They're going to be taking over Green Mountain College's uh, experimental campus up at Killington, where people are going to get a hands-on experience um, working in the ski area, handling the business end up there. They're also going to be taking over the uh, nurses' training program in Bennington, which is part of Southern Vermont College. And they will be handling that. That will become part of uh, Castlin University as Castlin University expands. So as we go into the new school year, there are a number of changes. It's going to seem a little bit different. I know the College of St. Joe is trying to refocus Um, they want to be sort of a uh, training area to set up new businesses and things like that. I think the best thing for the College of St. Joe would be for the, uh, the Rutland Housing Development Area to take over the buildings on that college and to turn them into uh, apartments for low-income people. Certainly you've got the dorms, wouldn't take much to turn them into apartments. It's the, uh, and I can't think of the name right now, but it's the uh, housing uh, thing of, of Rutland County. They have purchased the Immaculate Hatter Mary School here in Rutland and they're going to turn that into apartments. And I think with the beautiful campus you have down there at the College of St. Joseph, there's ample opportunity to provide housing for the low income. Also maybe housing for the homeless down there. Might not be a bad area for the open door mission to look at. Maybe relocating some of their, their uh, facilities down there. Um, it'd be a great place for the Boys and Girls Club here in Rutland. They're on Merchant's Row now. If they could relocate down to the College of St. Joe They've got the athletic building, which is a beautiful gymnasium. Uh, they've got a, a workout room. Also over in Tuttle Hall, you'd have a theater for those that are leaning toward the uh, theatrical point of view. I think it'd be a great place, you know, for the Boys and Girls Club. It's a huge campus down there. They could play soccer. They could play football if they want. There's a lot of opportunity to... Uh, Reconnect with nature down there, big wooded area. And all kinds of room. And it's a shame, you know, I go by that campus and it's still being very well maintained. And it'd be a shame, it is a shame, to see those buildings standing empty when they could be put to good use. For the city of Rutland, we don't have any place right now where we could have a convention Tuttle Hall would answer that question. Have that for an official city auditorium. So there's plenty of opportunity there. It just has to a uh, little forward thinking uh, whether or not right now they're doing a feasibility study and paying all outdoors for it, which to me is a waste of money. You don't need an outsider to come in to tell you what to do or what not to do. You can do that yourself locally. So here's what we've got, here's what would fit, and this is the direction we're going to go in. I think it would be the best thing to do. Well, that's my opinion on it, but I don't have anything to say about the uh, final disposition of the College of St. Joe. But the big institution now is Castle University, also Community College of Vermont. Our high schools are open, our grade schools are open. And the new school year of 2019-2020 is underway. It's very, very hard for me to realize that the freshman class coming in is going to be the class of 2023. You know, I never thought I'd last this long to see, to see that particular number. But uh, time marches on. And so we wish them all the best. And we wish them all have a great academic year. And for each and every one of you, may Almighty God in his infinite wisdom 
continue to bless these United States of America. Have a great week. Have a great Labor Day weekend, and we'll see you all in a couple of weeks.